This video is to show you how to add fabric motion and gathering to a skirt. And this video you can use to add fabric motion, motion or gathered lines to any drawing actually, except we're working on a skirt version of it today. But feel free to use this on anything that you want to add that gathering detail or any kind of fabric motion or drape to anything that you draw in the future. Um, first, for my students that are working on the gathered skirt, we have our front view skirt already completed. You should have done an object group on it to make sure that you can carry it across the page. Um, well, you are at this place right here, and you are going to add what's called gather lines. Those little gathers that I showed, um, actually let's zoom up to the top. These little gathers here, this is what we're adding, right? It's little fabric that gets cinched in. The fabric is bigger across the top. It gets cinched into a more narrow waist, and that is what creates these little gathers. Now, the fabric motion lines that are continuing all the way down to the bottom hem and making this skirt look very wavy at the bottom when it's worn is called fabric motion lines that go all the way down. So the little gathers are at the top, and then the, by them being scrunched at the top, it makes the fabric react all the way down the body of the skirt and makes it kind of go um, wavy at the bottom and makes it go in and out, kind of concave in the middle and creates like little shadow effects and stuff like that as well. So that's what we're drawing. We're drawing the gathers at the top and then these fabric motion lines all the way down the skirt. So in order to draw the fabric gather lines, um, you're just gonna use the pencil tool to do this. And I wanted to show you, we're gonna start off with a little bit of chunkier look and then we're gonna make it nice and like um, uh, skinnier looking after we change the stroke weight. So what you're going to draw is something that looks like this, like, and it's just little series of, you know, little small little um, lines and then some a little bit longer, then small, then long again. So we're going to kind of just draw it really randomly and it might take my beginning students a little bit to figure out, but we'll do it together. Make sure you have a no fill color in your fill box and a black stroke in your stroke box. And before you draw over top of this front view, I want you to do an object lock selection. Lock it, please lock it. Make sure that you can't grab your skirt because you are drawing these fabric gather lines very close to your stitching on your waistband and your waistband, um, your waistband seams. So I don't want you accidentally drawing over top of it and grabbing vector points in those areas. So let's lock that skirt drawing before we draw over top of it. Okay, now you're gonna use the pencil tool. And here we are on our pencil tool. And we're just gonna draw just only like up until about half, right? We're just gonna draw just little, and let's actually check what window stroke real quick. We're on a one point weight, stroke weight, that's fine for right now. We are gonna need this stroke box available for when we um, change the stroke weight. But for right now, just start drawing little small, you know, some big, some long, um, and just draw some small ones, some big ones, and some longer ones. And just be conscious that you might need to go back into some of them and fix them. Take the white arrow if one of the little fabric gathers doesn't touch the waistband, they need to touch this waistband seam. This is this waistband seam right here. They need to all touch. So if you have a gap like that, you need to take the white arrow and put that vector point and pull it up. If you have any ones that are a little bit too curvy, like for me, that's a little bit too curvy, I can pull the curve handle and just smooth it out a little bit. Um, if you have any ones that are a little bit too straight, like this one's a little straight, I might add a little bit of a curve in there, but not too much. It shouldn't be any curvier than like what I show you here, right? So it's just a couple medium sized longer ones and some small ones and some medium sized longer ones and then a small one. And try not to go too long, like I actually think this might be too long. Um, but basically you're just trying to do some kind of look like that and maybe end with a small. Okay, so something like that um, looks good. Kind of space them out a little bit um, here. So there's a little space in between each gather line. And then once you have just about halfway across, what I want you to do is take the black arrow and just hover over all those little fabric gathers and do an object group, okay? I want you to be able to group them because I'm gonna have you copy and paste them and go across um, the other side and fill in this side with those same fabric gathers. But before you do that, let's change the stroke weight so that you actually look more like this, like what I have up here. And in order to do that, we're gonna change the stroke line to something called profile number five, and the stroke weight's gonna be 0 0.25. So what I mean is you go to window stroke, remember our window stroke box, there you go, here it is right here. 
and you're going to change the weight of the stroke line to 0 0.25 point and we have not talked about this yet under at the very bottom of the window stroke box is something called profile and under here there's a lot of different profiles and basically what they are it just changes the, what your stroke line looks like so when we click on dash line it changes to look like top stitching like this if we use any of these profiles you can kind of see the way it's going to change your stroke line so this is going to create profile number five the one i'm highlighted on here is going to change to make these little chunky lines right here look like more thin to thick to thin again um, that's what that looks like so um, that's what we're going to use to create that look. So coming back over here, now that I object grouped all my um, fabric gathers, I'm going to change the weight of stroke lines to 0 0.25. I'm going to go down the profile and change them to profile number five. And if you hover over it, it tells you what the profile number is. But it's this one right here. And that's going to give you that nice look of really thin, thick stroke lines um, instead of those really thick ones that we had before. So now that you have that, let's do a copy paste, command C, command V, object transform reflect, and you're gonna reflect vertical, hit okay, and you're gonna bring that over with the black arrow, using the black arrow, and carry it over to the other side. Now if you have something that happened in between your two fabric gather copies, like I have, I have this like weird thing where they're both, both of the ending gathers are very much the same size, I think that's a bad visual. So I'm gonna take the white arrow and kind of maybe move the vector point down to on one of them to kind of make one a little bit longer and you can even if you have a bigger gap in between and you feel like there's a hole to fill you can add one more in the center if you wanted to and then all you have to do is eye drop onto um, the fabric gather you had you have do have to go back to window stroke and change the profile though so what you can't do with the eyedropper tool is actually copy the profile you can only copy the stroke weight so if you have a bigger gap, bigger than what I have here, you can maybe add one in the middle. I don't have as big of a gap. They all look pretty evenly spaced. I was only bothered by the fact that they were meeting at the same place. So I will take the vector point and maybe move it a little bit. Um, and there you go. That's kind of the look of your fabric gathers that happen at the waistband. Now what I want you to do after you do that is, cop is um, hold the shift key and select both of your fabric gathers going across and do an object group on all of them so that you have a whole entire row of fabric gathers that are in an object group um, sequence. And now we're gonna do that fabric motion that I was talking about that goes down the body of the skirt that the fabric gathers scrunch at the top and they start to create this kind of motion down the skirt and they make the skirt hem wavy like I showed on the model a minute ago. Um, what we're going to do is draw a sequence of different lines um, with very subtle curves in them um, down the body of the skirt. This is one of the hardest things for me to teach a beginning student is fabric motion. So basically, um, if you can just use this visual guide, it gives you an idea of how I drew it. I draw some a little bit medium size that come from the top. I come some that come off the bottom and they stop halfway. I draw some in the middle, kind of the body of the skirt that are a little longer, some that start from top and end a little shorter. It's really kind of like a mix matched um, sequence of lines that kind of come, some off the top, some come from the middle, some come off the bottom. And you just kind of just gradually draw it and that's um, roughly how I would draw fabric motion lines. I would not draw them super curvy, just draw them a very subtle curves, nothing crazy wavy in the middle. That would be inaccurate to the way that the fabric motion looks. And then we're going to change the profile weight of those um, fabric motion lines uh, to what we had in the fabric gather. So they look really thick and thin, a lot thin, thinner lines than we had before. So this is kind of what I drew, and I'll just roughly just start drawing with you guys on this one here. And I take the pencil tool and I move it over all the way to smooth. This is really important. So double click on the pencil tool and move it all the way to smooth if you lost, and then hit OK. If you lost the pencil tool for some reason, remember it's underneath the shaper tool down here, then you double click on it, move the bu blue button to smooth, hit OK. Make sure you have a no fill color and only a stroke color, and now you can start drawing with the pencil tool. So roughly, there's gonna be a lot of um, things that you're gonna just start to draw randomly, just random places. They're gonna look really straight probably to begin with, but we're just gonna use a lot of white arrow manipulation um, on this skirt. And every time I draw, it looks different. So, you know, just be 
conscious that it's going to look different every time you try and practice and that's fine because remember we have our white arrow to kind of help um fix anything that we think looks odd so if you have any lines that you drew and they come outside the boundary of the skirt make sure to take the white arrow and fix that because everything should exist inside the boundaries of the skirt that's really important and if you have drawn any lines and i'm going to make a mistake here to show you if you drew a line that looks like this and it's got crazy curves in it that is not accurate fabric motion line to the way that the fabric would react down the body of the skirt so it needs to be very subtle a very subtle curve or almost straight lines um, nothing crazy bendy like this is almost a little bit too curvy too so i'm gonna move the current handles in a little bit and then just some that start kind of closer to the body of the skirt up at the top and some that maybe come off the bottom and they start down here um, and I'm constantly, even after I initially draw these lines, I'm constantly taking the white arrow and moving the curve handles and kind of fixing them a little bit just to make them a little bit less curvy. You really want like a line that kind of looks kind of straight up and down um, and that it's, it comes, um, some start in the middle, some start at the top, some start at the bottom. I mean, it's really just you kind of just have to roughly look at it and just see how it goes. And for my beginning students, I think I just encourage you to just look at kind of what I have here and kind of roughly use that as a guide to trace from. Um, and if yours looks slightly different than mine, that's fine. Just again, look out for not making it look like lines like this. That would not be accurate. That is completely inaccurate to the way fabric motion looks. Once you have all your lines kind of figured out, and remember use the white arrow galore as to help you um, do these lessons. Um, and then I would keep your bot, your actual body CAD locked at this point. I had mine unlocked at the point, but I didn't ask you to unlock anything. So I'm going to lock this again. When you draw these, because after you're done drawing them, what I want you to do is take the black arrow and make sure your body's locked again before you do this. Hover over all of them when you feel good about them and then do an object group on them. And if you have it, if you don't lock the skirt CAD itself, it's going to grab the skirt and lock it with the fabric motion lines. I don't want that. I want the fabric motion lines to be their own thing that I can carry off the skirt completely and the skirt doesn't go with it. So make sure you double check that you grouped it um, separate of the skirt. So once you have them all grouped, what you're going to do is go to window stroke and we're just going to change the stroke weight profile again here's the instructions we're going to do profile number five just like we did on the gathers go down to profile number five and then go to 0 0.25 um, stroke weight and that's going to give us this look that you have over here right um, so basically this is the this is now um, the front view with the fabric gathers at the waistband and with the fabric motion lines going all the way through the body of the skirt and it's basically to have it look like this. And that's the goal of what you're trying to do with this lesson.